Yeah. I was, uh, I lived locally till up to the age of eight. I lived in Robert Owen House in Fulham Palace Road. If anybody knows Robert Owen House, it's uh, as you come up from Hammersmith towards Putney Bridge, it's on the right hand side, very near Bishop's Park. Oh, hello. There you go. <laughs> Sorry. Have I said tonight's secret word? <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Ready, studio. Good luck. Welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Bill Bailey. In the news this week. Boris Johnson's advisers come up with a way of making sure he doesn't mix up the North, the Midlands, London and Scotland. Coal, cars, cash and trees. Coal, cars, <laughs> cash and trees. With two minutes to spare, Lewis Hamilton remembers he hasn't bought a lottery ticket. <laughs> And at the Universal Studios theme park, there's a mixed reaction to the new Alfred Hitchcock ride. <laughs> On Paul's team tonight is an MP whose recent hashtags have included hashtag Johnson is a liar, hashtag Tory liars, hashtag Tory corruption, and hashtag <laughs> tax the rich. Please welcome Tory MP. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> From Labour MP, Dawn Butler. <laughs> On Ian's team tonight is a sometimes controversial comedian who once said, I think you can make a joke about anything. Fair enough, as long as you're not saying anything too inflammatory, like claiming that the crested grebe is migratory. <laughs> 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 Please welcome Finn Taylor. <laughs> we begin with the bigger news stories of the week. Paul and Dawn. Take a look at this. Yes. Climate change, Plus clearly. Pollution. Air pollution, yeah. you're absolutely mm. right. More pollution. <laughs> <laughs> on the one on the left. Oh, hello. Hello. Hello, <laughs> You've your food to the Samaritans? <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. Oh, yes. my word. <laughs> He's like, no, no. Cut him off. Now, the Queen has pulled out of hosting a reception for world leaders mm -hmm. at the conference. What would she be doing instead? Is she hosting the one show? <laughs> <laughs> well be. I tell you who's done a lot to reduce their carbon footprint. Prince Andrew. Yes. He's, okay. <laughs> yeah. well, he's, in... he's not left his house for months. Good on him. <laughs> Andrew's not going because the word cop is in the title. <laughs> <laughs> the Queen actually has been told to rest. But why is she so knackered? <laughs> <laughs> 95. <laughs> and apparently sources have told the press that she has been staying up late to watch TV. <laughs> what sort of source is that, though? Me, I probably said it. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, she probably watched the extended version of this show, which goes out at, I think, seven minutes past three in the morning every Wednesday. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> well, the BBC have been really giving it a push. They have. They've been giving it a right look. There you go, see? <laughs> <laughs> Contain some strong language and adult humour. Fuck me, I never knew that. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that RuPaul Merton? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, you saw there was a couple of phone calls going on. Who had their first phone call with Boris Johnson this week after a year and a half? Um, was it Putin? Yes. I was going to say his ex-wife, but, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, I mean, that's also possible. Yeah. It's yeah. the same as Putin asking where the money's gone. Yeah. <laughs> are you saying that Putin is his ex-wife? <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of them out there. I mean, would Boris remember? That's the thing, isn't it? Mm. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't forget that guy on the horse, topless. That was it. He told the PM, Vladimir Putin, that is, he told the PM he would not be attending the COP conference blaming sky-high COVID rates in Russia. Uh, and on the call, the PM had warned Putin that 
the current relationship with Russia is not one we want. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. To which Putin apparently replied, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, why is COP26 President Alok Sharma furious with Boris? <laughs> because he leaves unnecessary pauses. <laughs> Let's have a look at this. Why is he furious? Look at that. Because Boris um, stole the globe? Yeah. It gives an unfair representation of how big the Earth is. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. <laughs> it doesn't glow. Oh, has he got his hands over the country that this guy represents? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Now, the, apparently, it's because... Well, I mean, basically, the, the Prime Minister Boris has, has, has set these ridiculously high expectations of this conference. Has he? Yeah. Well, I mean, Boris was very, very keen to explain how important it was. He said uh, it was the most important summit this country has seen in our lifetime. Mm. But then he went on to say, I'm very worried because it might go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> we might not get the agreements that we need. It's touch and go. It's very, very difficult. Who has done their bit this week by pledging to be carbon neutral by 2060? 2060? 2060. 2060. Oh, is that North Korea? Well, you're in the right ballpark. South, South Korea. Korea. <laughs> <laughs> Saudis. Yes. Saudi. There you go. The Saudis have this week promised to cut their carbon emissions to net zero by 2060. And, you know, when those guys promise to cut something, they don't mess about. <laughs> 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 How did Boris Johnson embarrass himself in front of a group of school children last week? Oh, wow. Oh. 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 He pointed uh, out family resemblances between himself and the front row. <laughs> <laughs> he said something about feeding humans to animals. He told school kids he was sad to see the destruction of trees and green sites, joking, we could feed some of the human beings to the animals. <laughs> He's become quite extreme as a green, hasn't he? <laughs> Which TV legends are making a much-heralded comeback for COP? Bergerac! <laughs> I'm often shouting out Bergerac. Quite often, it's got nothing to do with what I've just been asked. There's right. another example. You've got involuntary Bergerac. Yeah, yeah. I'm afraid I have. <laughs> Bergerac! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. They are TV legends, though, and it's not Bergerac, no. Mm. And they're, they're appearing at COP. They're appearing at COP, yeah. The A-team? Oh, they've got a recycling connection. Well, sort of, they, yeah, they, you know, they make good use of the things that they find. Oh, the Wombles! Yes! The Wombles! Uh, the Wombles! You seriously hadn't heard about this? Do you know, I hadn't. Um, I, I read quite a lot about COP26, but the, the bit about the Wombles just... <laughs> <laughs> ...passed me by. I think it was all that stuff about targets and carbon dioxide. <laughs> Why I missed Uncle Bulgaria's return. <laughs> <laughs> Is he Bulgaria? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh, right, he's probably um, outlawed now <laughs> due to his extreme right-wing policy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they're back, are they? They're, the Wombles they're, are back. Right, they're wombling over Glasgow, picking up litter. Yeah, exactly. Well, there's a government-backed social media campaign to show Brits how they can save the planet. As you say, they couldn't tempt Uncle Bulgaria back. He's earning a fortune as an HGV driver. <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> now, these are CGI Wombles. Oh, oh, not sure about that. So, can we, can we see them? No. Imagine the Womble, right? Yeah. yeah. And then imagine it's cgi <laughs> There you go. OK, I've done it. That's it, <laughs> right. There you go, let's have a look at that. There's more than I remember. Yeah, but they... they breed like Wombles. <laughs> <laughs> In other environment news, who has made a not-so-welcome return this week? Insulate Britain. Insulate yes. Insulate Britain. Insulate Britain. Well, they, they didn't go away, did they? They've been gluing more things to the road this week. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Somebody glued their face. Somebody no. glued their face to the road. road. That's right. Things have reached the heads glued to road stage of the climate crisis. Uh, for me, they had this morning, yes. I'm concerned about your head. Yes, so am I. You're not going to snip yourself, are you? Uh, hopefully not. You'll find out if there's blood coming out. <laughs> Brings a new meaning to the phrase keeping your ear to the ground. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, of all the... Silly things to do. <laughs> oh, that was a very careful silly. <laughs> oh, you can spot a sitting MP, can't you? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> this is quite brave, though, isn't it? I mean, I, I know it's silly, but I mean, he, he stuck his face to the he road. Stuck his face to the I ground. mean, a hand. And it could face? it could just come off, and he could it could just be a face on the road. <laughs> <laughs> or, face off. Or a road on his face, and every time he laid down, somebody tried to park him. <laughs> <laughs> OK, that's a happier outcome. <laughs>
he had his asper inhaler though. He glued his hand to the and the <laughs> asper inhaler is just out of. Is that just out of like, reach? <laughs> just, <laughs> just kick it over, mate. Just kick it over a bit. <laughs> Put it in my mouth. <laughs> now, of course, there's some anti insulate Britain protesters, um, and they've been using lots of interesting tactics to try and stop the campaigners this week. What do you think was the most brutal thing they tried? Somebody started playing bagpipes, didn't they? That's right, yeah. What could be harsher than that? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody tries to move them by playing the bagpipes in their face. And if that worked no. as a political tactic, the English would have left Scotland mm. centuries ago. <laughs> <laughs> now, how did talk radio host Mike Graham oh, embarrass wow. himself in an interview with an insulate Britain protester? Concrete can grow? It was extraordinary. <laughs> Look at this. Morning, Mike. Oh, hello. What are you glued to, Cameron? Uh, just to your screen, unfortunately. Unfortunately? What do you do for a living, well. Cameron? I'm a carpenter. A carpenter, right. So how safe is that for the climate? Well, I work with timber, which is a much more sustainable material rather than concrete. I also but you work with trees that have been cut down then, don't you? It's a sustainable building practice. How is it sustainable if you're killing trees? Because it's regenerative, you can grow trees. <laughs> well, you can, you can grow all sorts of things, can't you? Well, you can't grow concrete. You can. See you, Cameron. Cheerio. I love the way he just pretends to freeze. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He went on yeah. and he got an interview the next day and doubled down on the whole he thing. Did. This is him with Jeremy Carr. Yeah. So they're all going, he's so stupid, he doesn't know that concrete doesn't grow. I mean, do they really think that? They actually think that? It expands. That? Well, if you have ever seen somebody making concrete in a concrete mixer, yeah. I don't know whether you've ever watched anyone doing that, yeah, but you basically exciting, put you know, sand in, put water in, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. cement goes in, yeah. you know, you make concrete, it expands, it grows. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fair yeah. enough, right? Yeah. I've not heard of this station before. It's for people who find LBC a bit too soft. <laughs> <laughs> Real Isn't... hardcore yeah. stuff. I see as a punishment for his former broadcasting career that made Jeremy Kyle sit on a ledge in the middle of central London. <laughs> <laughs> like a pigeon. Yeah. <laughs> Carpenter, eh? Oh, yeah. yeah. Trees, oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a useless job, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. What are you, paramedic? Oh, paramedic, yeah. eh? What, bringing people back to life so they can <laughs> breathe more air? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Talking about daft things that people say uh, based on no facts, I'm coming to you, Dawn. OK. Uh-oh. Now then, in October 2019, Dawn Butler, you said, let's just accept people for who they are and live as our true, authentic selves. Nothing wrong with that. Mm. I get behind that. It's a totally mm. an honourable, noble thing oh, to say. I, I remember But this. then you said 90% of giraffes are gay. <laughs> Actually, true. Hold on, hold on, hold and this on. Isn't a talk. This is the Mike Graham technique. Just double down. This yeah, is double down. <laughs> this isn't a talk They're all gay. This isn't a talk radio truth. I mean, I read it, um, but, uh, so, but it is a known fact. But the argument was then that people. Well, say I read it. It's a known no, 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 fact. No, no, no. Hold on, hold on. Let They're not gay. They're predatory, and so they have a lot of gay sex, but they're not gay. Hold on. No, but I, I mean, I don't know a lot about giraffes, you know, but what I do know is that they move in, uh, you know, the females move in a group, uh, don't they, roam around, mm -hmm. and the males, uh, they don't come across them at all. Mm -hmm. And occasionally the male will be allowed in to, you know, <whistles> put a bit of, you know, mm -hmm. when you get caught between the moon and New York City. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, I know it's crazy, <laughs> but it's true. Yes. Uh, <laughs> And do a lot of the male giraffes... And the male giraffes then take no part... Do they have sex with... They have sex with lots of women, and then they take women? no part in the upbringing. <laughs> <laughs> they have sex with women? No, female giraffes. Stop going to safari parks! <laughs> but when and if you giraffes... do go, don't take a step ladder. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> women's giraffes, not actual women. <laughs> uh, well, 
all this giraffe-based nonsense is the fact that, yes, this is the build-up to COP26. <laughs> Which has got... <laughs> <laughs> nothing to do with giraffe. <laughs> I don't need this. <laughs> I've got grade six clarinet. I don't need to do this. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> oh, I, can, I can do the cha-cha. I can do anything. Now, so, <laughs> this... <laughs> all this giraffe-based nonsense. No. This is the build-up to COP26. Last week, the Queen stayed overnight at the King Edward VII Hospital, or, as she prefers to call it, Great Grandpapa's Pauly Palace. <laughs> <laughs> Boris Johnson has used both Kermit and the Wombles to promote his green agenda. Asked if he had no other frames of reference apart from old children's TV characters, the Prime Minister said... <laughs> <laughs> Ahead of the Climate Change Summit, Boris Johnson held a press conference to children, where the most common question they asked was, what will COP26 achieve, closely followed by, are you my daddy? <laughs> <laughs> Ian and Finn... Have a look at this. This is the allowance for Boris's ninth kid. <laughs> <laughs> this is the budget. Um, <laughs> he's undoing his jacket. That's the a metaphor. There they are. Thought. Absolute lads. <laughs> Get in. Stag do. <laughs> <laughs> oh. He's not going through the revolving door just yet. <laughs> <laughs> Eats the budget. Which, again, I mean, is absolutely extraordinary. I mean, to, uh, I, I, you must be really tough, Dawn. I mean, cos, you know, that's a Corbynite budget we've just had. Um, it's the biggest giveaway, the biggest tax and spend since the 1950s. I mean, how do you oppose it? What do you, what do you say? We could have sorted out sort of VAT on, on fuel. We're going to, people are going to be plummeted into fuel poverty this winter. There's a lot that could have been done. It's definitely not a Corbyn budget. But, do you think... But, think... but I can get... I, I get the PR around it, though. Mm. Absolutely nothing in the budget for LGBT giraffe rights. <laughs> <laughs> 150 billion. I mean, it's, it's, it's amounts... I mean, the Labour Party hasn't dreamt of spending that much for years. Well, some of us have. Huh? <laughs> 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 We've slashed the price of Prosecco and short-haul flights. Yeah, Ooh, I mean, again, shows crazy. that Rishi's in the pocket of the big Hindu company. He's going to be cutting the duty on those little penis straws next, before you know. Um, uh, <laughs> he's given up on austerity. They tried that for ten years. It didn't go so well. Uh, so we've dumped austerity and we've gone for optimism. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, that which is, is less concrete and scientific, but... It plays better. Yeah, it so sounds you say better. To people, when you say it's less fine. concrete, do you mean there's no opportunity <laughs> for growth? <laughs> <laughs> what happened when Rishi Sunak got up to make his speech and then somebody had a word? Speaker, I know Deputy Speaker, um, because they'd already leaked uh, the majority of the budget beforehand mm. and parliamentary protocol and the ministerial code, which is constantly being broken, means that they're supposed to come to Parliament first and they don't. And so well, there are other codes that are broken, aren't there? There are Dawn. loads of codes that are broken. What, calling people liars? Well, mm. yeah, but Boris Johnson is a liar. I mean, it's not as if, it's not as if I've made that up, do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like... It's like it's, there's enough, there's enough evidence out there. Did you do the research, that, Ian? Yeah, this, yeah. You know, <laughs> there's enough <laughs> reading. No, I'm interested in the criticism of breaking the code that matters with Rishi Sunak, but not with you. I didn't break the ministerial code because I'm not a minister. You broke the MP's code. He's a minister and he stands up and he breaks the code. You know, they get caught with their pants down. They get away with it. Oh, it's a private matter. You know, they bully civil servants. Oh, it, it doesn't matter. It's a private matter. We'll, just, we'll just pay them off. At any other time, the Prime Minister would fall on their sword. Well, like when the Mandelson affair happened in uh, your government's time. Uh, I'm not did saying, everyone look, fall on their swords? I don't think they did, did they? Oh, th uh, tell me one minister that has resigned in Johnson's government. Hancock breaking COVID rules to be snogging. And, and what not, to, was it to the moon, in between the... Moon and New York moon City. Not, the moon and New York City. <laughs> I know it's crazy, but it's true. <laughs> you know? It's the and, best that you can do, isn't it, really? I mean, eventually. He did resign, though, didn't he? 
It was forced to. He, he oh, was really, he should have been, no. been sacked. He should have been sacked, not resigned. He didn't he resign. Did. He, he was resigned, he wasn't was, he? And he, was, <laughs> he couldn't be trusted to resign on his own case. He resigned something else by accident, <laughs> like the Iron <Island. laughs> <laughs> Or France. Exactly. <laughs> and then... And then they tried to bloody recycle him by giving him to Africa, and Africa's like, no, you can have your rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me a thing in the budget that's going right. down. Okay. I have not taken okay. any notice of it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to have a game of snap instead? <laughs> uh, wine. Red wine has gone up. Right. Because they're they're making beer cheaper, and they want to make us drink more British wine. And the problem with that is that, you know, as a wine drinker, you, you like wine because of the kind of sophistication on the label, you know, Loire Valley, right. mountains of Argentina. It's not the same if you're sharing a bottle of 76 Skegness. <laughs> <laughs> no, no I think that's not fair. There's a lot of very good British wine these days. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, they're wine. obviously. Yeah. All they're... right, I'll take it back. <laughs> 76 was a great year. <laughs> Here's a picture of Rishi delivering the budget. Do you want to see some more pictures of Rishi Sunak? Yes, I, please. I would, yeah. All right, then. Here, here's a picture of Rishi in sliders. <laughs> They're warm with socks, apparently. And, oh, um, oh. Then... When you first said the sentence, I thought you were talking about some sort of nightclub somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so what well, are they? They're sort of shoe socks. They're a sort of... It's basically a posh flip-flop. They cost 95 quid, these. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Here's Rishi and Simon Clark. Oh. <laughs> oh, dear. Who was a lot taller. That's one of the books on the top shelf that he couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> and um, here is Rishi doing some glove puppetry. Never thought I'd say that. Oh, yeah, he's explaining the budget to the PM, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> now, Keir Starmer couldn't respond to the Chancellor's statement. Why was that? Covid. It's the fifth time he's had to go into isolation. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's tough, right? I know. He can't be seen in public. No one can talk to him. He can't give his views on anything. And on top of that, he's got COVID. <laughs> <laughs> but you wouldn't speak to him, would you, Dawn? Would oh. you? Would you speak to him? I mean, you're a bit of a Corbyn fan, aren't you? Of course I would speak to Keir. Keir's the leader of the Labour Party. I'm a Labour I MP. I just you read this. On a, I read this in some research I was looking at earlier on. <laughs> Keir only thinks 80% of giraffes are Kier's all right. Yeah. There's a real endorsement. It's all right. right. It's oh, all yeah. right. Come on. <laughs> so, who... Now, who yeah. took Prime Minister's question time for Labour in Keir Starmer's place? Ed, Ed Miliband, Miliband, is it? Ed Miliband, yeah. yes. Mm. Oh. He only sounds Ed... like he's got COVID. <laughs> oh, Ed Miliband, he ruined everything. So, uh, anyway... Uh... <laughs> no, I mean, do you think if his brother had taken over, that would have been fine? Well, I think, first of all, I think Ed did a really good job. Yeah. Um, I think he did a really good job at PMQs. I think he, he held the Prime Minister to account. He, you yeah. know, he was kind of squirming and, and, you know... To be fair, though, he does squirm and bluff when people say, what kind of coffee do you want? You know, like... <laughs> <laughs> the one time that I attended the Prime Minister's Question Time uh, was a few years ago now, and I'd been invited along there, and I was... Uh, Cameron was the Prime Minister at that, at that point. And about five minutes before they started, suddenly there was this buzz round, went round the auditorium and I could see people whispering to each other, whispering to each other. And the, and the guy I was with said, I said, what's going on? And he went to find out and he came back and he said, he said, John Sargent has left Strictly Come Dancing. <laughs> 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 oh, it's amazing how those programmes take over, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also in the news this week... The government, after much ridicule, has performed a U-turn on water firms dumping raw sewage into the sea. Good Lord. A U-bend, in a fact. A U-bend, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and why? Why were people so upset about the government voting down the environment bill? There were 400,000 incidents of water companies dumping raw sewage yeah. last year. Mm. And the reason they, they did it, it was cheaper to pay the fine. You pay for it to be dealt with is more expensive than paying the fine, which is ludicrous. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's about levelling up, isn't it? You want to spread the shit around the country. <laughs> <laughs> Too much faeces in the southeast. It's, people in the north haven't had shit for years. No. <laughs> people are jealous. Southeastern water, they're the worst. There's just mm. shit. Yeah. Go -go, actually, you know? no, you're right. Actually, it's uh, Southern Water yeah. was fined a record 90 million pounds 
for deliberately dumping billions of litres of raw sewage into protected seas over several years for its own financial gain. A very important uh, player has come into this whole story, Pam Ayres. How did she get involved? I mean, it's not a, you know, it's no brainer really. She wrote a poem. She, she wrote a poem. poem. Yeah. Would you like to hear what the poem is? Yes, then. please. This is a poem that Pam Ayres wrote. It's called Shit Creek River. <laughs> Here it goes. Farewell, sparkling brooklet. The salmon in the pool. Good morning, panty liner. The tampon and the stool. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Still got it, Pam. <laughs> <laughs> this is Rishi Sunak's budget statement to the House of Commons. While preparing his budget, Rishi Sunak was seen wearing sliders. If you don't know what they are, sliders are a kind of footwear, unless you're Matt Hancock, in which case they're your trousers. <laughs> so... <laughs> Just before he tested positive for COVID, Starmer was practising his budget response in front of his staff. As a result, we now know that the virus could be transmitted by a yawn. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, it's two points each. Hooray! 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 Um, <laughs> on to round two. And back by popular demand from series 33, episode four, it's Name That News. Hooray! Here's your first clue. Hey, what's the matter? What's the matter? Oh, yeah. What's the matter? Yes. Yeah, shut up your face. Oh, shut, shut up, up your face. Your face. Yeah. Yes, so correct. Very well yeah. done. So, what, so do we have to get the story now? I don't know. I've no idea. Do you know? I've no idea. No, do you sorry. need me to play it again? Or are you right? No, no, no. We, we, that's enough. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a clue? There's a clue. The clue is literally in the name. Shut up your face. Shut up, Shut your, up face. your face. Your face. Facebook. Face. Yes! Oh. Shut up your Facebook. Yeah, no wonder we haven't done this for 30 <laughs> years. <laughs> is it the, the whistleblowers? Yes. Facebook. That's right. Yeah. This... Oh, hang on. This is... <laughs> <laughs> I can't, can't do that with... I can't even lean on it. Oh. <laughs> For sake. <laughs> this, this clip is going to be appearing in the Channel 5 documentary called When Quiz Shows Go Horribly Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> what is whistleblower Francis Haugen accusing the company of? Facebook promotes hate speech to those who are interested in hate speech. It, it points them towards sites which are misogynistic, yeah. uh, right homophobic, etc. That's right, exactly. It takes people who have mainstream interests and it pushes them to extreme content. Yeah. So, exactly right. So, you could start off looking at Little Mix or something, the next minute you're looking at Slipknot. You know, that's the sort of way it works. <laughs> <laughs> but there's another whistleblower appeared as well. Um, who said that basically they put profit before um, any sense of morality and Facebook were told to clean up these sites that attracted children and yeah. the executives wandered around saying, oh, oh, don't do that, that doesn't make us any money. Essentially, Facebook is what everyone assumed it was uh, doing anyway, which yeah. is basically amplifying toxic drivel. Internal papers reveal that the Washington Post said that the site would rank reactions given to posts and here are the six of them. There you are. That means like, love, ha-ha, wow, sad and angry. Yeah, and that give... stormed the capital, that last one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like a relationship in five emojis. <laughs> like, oh, love, ha-ha, wow, sad, angry, the end. <laughs> uh, these five points are given to the angry emoji and one to the like. So posts that had more angry reactions mm. would appear higher up the newsfeed, as you say, amplifying this unpleasantness. Francis Hagen claimed that the site helped fuel the riots at Capitol uh, yes. Hill in January, mm -hmm. and as it, they switched off safety systems that it had implemented during the election. So that's what amplified that whole thing. So yeah. those angry emojis were being pushed. And it meant speed. huge amounts of um, posts and what information they... research. Um, could just be sent from yeah. bots in Russia to um, Middle America. Do you reckon that's where you got your giraffe thing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, it's a scientific fact. Look it up. <laughs> but um, but clickbait is exactly how they make their money. Um, they don't care about the content. They don't care about how it affects people. There was no. there was information about self harming. They don't care, no. you know, how it affects young people. Just as long as. They make money, and that's why we need a proper online harms bill to make these companies responsible and to make them pay, not a piddly amount of money that doesn't mean anything to them. You know, something that's going to hit them hard in their pocket. Mm. Thanks. 
What do you think, Ian? Will they be regulated in the end? At every point, whenever there's a new technology, whether it was a steam press at the turn of the previous century or it's the internet now, at some point they have to admit they are culpable and they are responsible and then they have to be regulated. The monopoly should be broken up and you know, Damien Collins and various people are, are actually trying um, to make them admit you're not a platform, you're a publisher. You're putting this stuff on and you've got to yeah. be responsible for it. What was the problem with the steam press? Um, <laughs> Is that causing a lot of suicides, a lot of, um, <laughs> lot of yeah. mobs? Uh, early newspapers, it meant yeah. you'd get a million newspapers. Oh, I thought you meant like a trouser thing. No. <laughs> I see now. Yeah. Now I understand. And aside from making us all hate each other, Facebook, uh, they've been working on building the metaverse. I know it's difficult to explain, but it's, 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 there is a sort of an agreed uh, definition, which is VR on acid. <laughs> I mean, so you don't live in the real world anymore, right. you just live uh... inside a screen. Yeah, exactly. A bit like us. Lots of people do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're trapped in the metaverse. <laughs> <laughs> i tell you what, do you want to have a look at what the metaverse looks like? Yes, please. Yes, go on. All right, go are on Are we going to be in it or are we just going to... Well, we're just going to have a look at it at the moment. You're going in. I think this is what it looks like. Hey, are you coming? Yeah, just got to find something to wear. All right, perfect. Ooh, boy. <laughs> oh, hey, Mark. Hey, what's going on? Hey, Hi. Mark. Hi, Mark. What's up, Mark? Whoa, we're floating in space? Uh-huh. Who made this place? It's <laughs> awesome. Right? It's from a crater. I met in L.A. Uh, this place is amazing. <laughs> Boz, is that you? Of course it's me. You know I had to be the robot, man. <laughs> I thought I was supposed to be the robot. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I knew you were bluffing. <laughs> hey, wait, where is Naomi? Let's yes, call her. Naomi! <laughs> hey, should we deal you in? Sorry, I'm running late, but you've got to see what we're checking out. There's an artist going around Soho hiding AR pieces for people to find. 3D street art? That's cool. What you I... invented there is The Sims. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not the metaverse, that's a PC game from 2003. And what he's demonstrating is it's, it's, there's this brilliant idea of having friends and you play cards with them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but one of, one of them's the, one of the creatures that used to advertise instant mashed potato on the telly. <laughs> <laughs> and it is tragic that Zuckerberg's vision of the future is someone might like him. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to happen. <laughs> I like the way when Zuckerberg sees a version of himself, he goes, perfect. <laughs> I mean, it is narcissism, isn't it? The whole yeah. Facebook is based on him rating girls at college. Yeah. Who's like or don't like. And yeah. then we go, I wonder how that turned into something that's a bit misogynistic. <laughs> <laughs> don't know, Mark. I can't imagine how that trajectory panned out. No. In other news, why has this dinosaur statue in Portsmouth been upsetting locals? It comes up live at night and eats children. <laughs> a bunch of giraffes are trying to mount it. <laughs> What you're saying, it's, it's too sexy. <laughs> it's too sexy for Portsmouth. <laughs> it's, it's, no. it's, know, it's made of concrete and it's growing. No. <laughs> it's a size issue, right? Oh. It's too small. This is the original statue. <laughs> now, that burnt down, right? I don't know how. And then £35,000 replacement, 11 years later, is this. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just check on the size of that dog yeah. with my criticism? <laughs> this is the news that Facebook whistleblower Francis Haugen has been revealing the company secrets to Parliament's joint committee. Facebook have been accused of putting profit over harm to society after they made £8 billion profit in the last quarter. Last Obviously, that's after tax. It was originally £8 billion and six pounds. <laughs> <laughs> In other high-tech news, three of Britain's intelligence agencies have struck a deal with Amazon to store classified documents. The producers are already factoring this into the next Bond film. The dossier should be waiting for you at home, 007. If it's not with the neighbours, try looking behind the bins. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, who wants some showbiz gossip? Go on. I've got it. There's a lot of speculation about who's going to be the next James Bond. And according to my source, this week they definitively ruled out Alec Baldwin. Wow. <laughs>
finally, in this round... Uh... Oh, bloody hell, we're still playing this, aren't we? Yeah, we're still playing this. <laughs> <laughs> right, what is this song? Uh, I'm a dancer. Oh. God, yeah, um, I'm Go a, on. I don't know it. I'm a dancer? I'm a... Um, <laughs> 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 it's an instrumental. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a... Sing, I'm a... Th I'm a... <laughs> Yeah, you know it. Oh, I know this. It's uh, Beethoven. Yes. <laughs> is it, is it Sunday night in the old people's home? No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't knock it. It's a good circuit, the play. Yeah. <laughs> rhythm, 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 dancer. Rhythm, 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 rhythm is a dancer. Rhythm is a dancer. Yeah. There you go. That's right. Yeah, rhythm is a... Thank you. <laughs> yeah, this is the exciting news that uh, Indri lemurs have a sense of rhythm. Now... Eh? Oh, God, I know the research paper this came from. <laughs> <laughs> so the element of the quiz has disappeared. You play a tune and then tell us the answer. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a meta quiz. <laughs> yeah. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. All right. Good. How have they made this decision? Studying lemurs. They were a uh, civil partnership between two giraffes. <laughs> <laughs> Page boys were lemurs. <laughs> Wasn't ring-tailed lemurs, no. Come on, you must remember this. By analysing the songs of 39 Indri lemurs living in the rainforest of Madagascar, it revealed their calls of a rhythm which is similar to human music. Oh. The creatures often strike up a song with family members in duets or choruses featuring sounds that vary from roars to wails. What is the lemur's preferred rhythm? Three, four. They're like a waltz. They're romantic creatures, lemurs. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, Paul was closest. Yeah, I was, yeah. What, seven, eight? No, that wasn't seven, eight. That was, that'd be jazz. That'd oh, be yeah. madness. Come on. Oh, no. God, jazz. Oh, God. <laughs> How jazz stupid lemurs. of me. Lemurs and jazz, what an idiot. Yeah. Oh. No, the lemur likes a one-to-one -one rhythm, basically. Oh, really? You know, it repeats one segment and then it repeats it again. So it's yeah. like... Do, 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 do you want to have a listen? Yeah. Here's some lemurs. Go on, him. They feel. <laughs> Which means, at the end of this round, it's Ian and Finn with three, Paul and Dawn also with three. <laughs> OK, it's time now for the odd one out round. Just one between you this week. Your four are French Vogue, the name Nigel, Boris and Boris, and Hanforth Parish Council. Is it that French Vogue's closed, the name Nigel's dying out? Yeah. Hanforth Parish Council closed down? Uh... She's moving. <laughs> Is she live? Oh, uh, for... Is she the odd one out? She's the only one that's uh... live now. <laughs> Are there. you on Zoom, Jackie Weaver? Am I anywhere other than on Zoom? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> What was the question? So, so, so well, like, she's not one out because she's the only one that's live as opposed to the other ones. Well, no, it's not that. It's not oh. that. Jackie's not the oh. one out. Oh, she's oh. not? No. OK, I'm going to tell you the answer. They're all changing the name except for the name Nigel, which isn't being used anymore. Noble Nigels. I tell you what, no, the Hanforth Parish Council, which of which Jackie is obviously our famous member, she, they shot to fame earlier this year as a result of a chaotic Zoom meeting. Let's remind ourselves of what happened. Uh, you have no authority here, Jackie Weaver. No authority at all. <laughs> don't, don't, she just kicks him out. Don't. This is a meeting called by two councillors. Illegally. They now elect a chairman. No, they can't because the vice chair's here. I take charge. <laughs> Read the standing orders. Read them and understand them! <laughs> <laughs> What's happened to him, Jackie? Um, I think he's allowed to um, use an iPad on its own now. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jackie, uh, in order to distance themselves from that debacle, the Hanforth Parish Council decided to change their name. 
Uh, what's it called now? Hanforth Town Council. <laughs> Okay. Well, that's, well good. that's brilliant. We'd yeah. never have guessed. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jackie Weaver. <laughs> now, the Office for National Statistics has revealed that the name Nigel is on the decline. Mm -hmm. uh, what would parents rather call their babies than Nigel? Anything. Anything. <laughs> More babies were called Lucifer last year. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> what is the fashion magazine Vogue Paris changing its name to? Is it Private Eye? No. <laughs> We're changing our name to Vogue. <laughs> <laughs> First cover model, Jackie Weaver. Yeah. <laughs> She's still there! She's still... Jackie, do you not know how to end the Zoom call? <laughs> I'm just looking for um, Ian's address now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send it. Are we in the metaverse now? No. <laughs> <laughs> so there's two Russian politicians there, Boris Vishnevsky and Boris Vishnevsky, and they're not quite what they seem. Neither of them are the real Boris Vishnevsky. Mm. Uh, they both changed their names to confuse voters who may have supported the real Russian liberal politician, mm. Boris Vishnevsky. Mm. In other news, a fish and chip shop in Greenwich got into trouble recently over its name. Can anyone think of a mildly offensive name for a fish and chip shop? Fish and shit. <laughs> Chip will fix it. Oh. <laughs> it's named after a terrible murderer. Hitler's fish bar. <laughs> Jack the Chipper. Jack the Chipper. Uh... It is Jack the Chipper. Well done. Here is the chip shop owner himself, Recep Turhan. He got into a lot of trouble. The locals didn't like it. They decided to boycott the shop, claiming it glorifies the serial killer. And they also suggested the business hates women. So how has he tried to prove that he isn't supporting a murderer? Did he do ladies' night? <laughs> On Tuesday. <laughs> yes, he did <laughs> ladies' night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 uh. <laughs> they had a half price day for women. <laughs> yeah, they, they've all changed the name, except for the name Nigel, which isn't being used anymore. The royal family often influenced trends in names. Archie is now number nine on the list of most popular boys' names after Harry and Meghan used the name for their son. And Andrew has also made the list, but sadly it's the FBI's most wanted. <laughs> <laughs> Fish and chip shop Jack the Chipper has refused to change its name. The owner said it would be the last thing on his mind to capitalise on disturbing crimes whilst biting into his customer favourite, Jimmy Saveloy. Yeah. <laughs> so, the final scores are... Ian and Finn have three. Paul and Dawn have four. <laughs> On which note, we say thank you to our <laughs> panellists, Ian Hislop and Finn Taylor, Paul Merton and Dawn Butler. And I leave you with the news that Angela Merkel admits she might have overdone it a bit at her leaving drinks. <laughs> <laughs> After severely criticising their carbon emissions policy, the government admit it was a mistake to let the Australians design the COP26 meditation garden. <laughs> <laughs> and in London, an insulate Britain protester glues himself to an ancient monument. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Yeah.